Um, it's always great to continue the conversation with the sales development community and continue to network uh, despite all of um, the challenges we've had with COVID. Um, so it's great to see uh, so many familiar names um, on, on the list of attendees here. Uh, so like Vivian said, uh, my name is Brooke Bachesta. I'm a manager of sales development at Outreach. Um, I lead our West Coast mid-market team. Um, the team at Outreach is about uh, 50 SDRs, large now uh, and growing, and we have eight managers. Um, and what I really wanted to touch on today is um, a couple of things. <laughs> managers today, I think like I love my job, and I think a lot of SDR managers, like you get into it because you love coaching and working with your team and, and really developing people at an early stage in their career. Um, but we've had a total paradigm shift with the work from home and, and COVID restrictions. And so today, you know, it is pretty isolating. Um, I don't know if any of you live alone or, or not with a ton of roommates, but I've realized that not all salespeople are extroverted, but I think we all get a lot out of our interactions in the office. And it's been tough uh, to stay at home. Not to mention, we're all doing more with less. Um, budgets are uh, you know, we're tightening those up. We're trying to be all trying to be conservative with where uh, the economy is. Um, and so we're trying to be really fiscally responsible and we're inundated with decisions uh, day to day. It's so easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of what's going on day to day. Um, it can be exhausting, right? Like I think every day um, I get a lot of energy from, from my role, um, but kind of, you know, towards the end of the week, it's like, oh, we just ran a marathon. Um, and there's still so much to do. Um, and now with, you know, we're not the only ones working from home, our reps are as well. Uh, and so not only are we working to support their performance like we always have and their development as an employee um, and as a member of our team, but we're working to support their mental health and make sure that people are set up for success. And so what I'll be touching on today is some of the things that we're continuing to learn at Outreach, but just wanted to share some best practices with you. So this is a quote, and it's from my manager. His name is Steve Ross, and he's uh, totally the goat. I love working for this man. Um, but he sent out an email when did COVID hit? Like March, mid March. And we were all starting to work from home, and I think as leaders, we all take on an immense sense of ownership with our teams. And unintentionally, we were starting to create these silos of like, okay, I'm trying to own this, and like I got it covered, and. Um, I started to make decisions in a bubble. And Brian was talking about this in a session earlier today. Um, there's a lot of assuming going on. So he sent a note out about like, look, it's not about what resources you have. Sure, we can all acknowledge that like, it's different working alone. You might feel isolated. You don't have your same monitor set up as you might in the office. You have your family. <laughs> uh, for those who are parents, you're, you're also managing teaching. It's not about the resources you have. It's about whether or not you can be resourceful. And he even mentioned that his old boss used to tell him this and he hated it <laughs> until he realized how to harness this power. Um, and it was a game changer for him. And over the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, March to June now, we've really taken this to heart and been finding a lot of opportunities um, to do more with the team that we have and uh, to find some opportunities to stop spreading ourselves so thin. So, First thing is first, like really take a moment to acknowledge, uh, you know, what kind of special talents you all bring to the table. Um, we have, like I mentioned, eight managers on the team, 50 SDR. So it's quite large and there's a lot going on. Um, but even before we had uh, su such a huge team, um, you know, when early days as a startup, um, there are still responsibilities that needed to, to get divvied up. And so um, this has always been an outreach value of like owning things, um, but clearly dividing some areas of captainship. As leaders, there are so many projects and programs that we're tasked with. We're recruiting and building this team. Uh, you got to think big picture. Uh, how are we attacking like workflows and, and general product knowledge on the floor? Are we onboarding well? Um, outside of just their onboarding or, or my reps getting the mentorship that they need to be successful long term outside of that like is it still fun are we running spiffs and contests so it's not i mean sdr I mean, can be a really draining job um the role itself i think tactically uh you know we can teach a lot of people how to do it but it's the mental game that gets really tough so i'm making sure that my reps are still having fun at work 
then we all need to make sure that like, okay, I'm keeping them up to date on what's going on so that they can be educated about where we stand in the space and, and how we stack up to other folks so we can consult. Um, and then there's all the nitty gritty of like, okay, operationally, is everything running well? And uh, if we were in a room together, I would ask everybody, raise your hand if you've ever tried to do all of these well and therefore executed on none of them. Definitely, <laughs> I'm assuming that many folks would be raising their hands. Um, so we've decided, okay, we're gonna start to split these up amongst ourselves. I realize that um, we have the luxury of having multiple managers to share this with, um, but if it's not other managers on the team, say you're a, a team of one manager and you have 10 reps on the floor and you're scaling this team, I'm willing to bet that there are senior reps on your team uh, who would jump at an opportunity to lead this. I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, so for recruiting, that's something where you gotta have irons in the fire at all times, even now when a lot of companies are pressing pause on, on hiring and growth plans, and we're all trying to be conservative. Um, you still need to get the word out about like, hey, this is a great company to work at. You can start to build relationships with your candidates. So we actually have a rep, a couple reps on the squad. Um, they want to be leaders, like formal managers at some point. And they're really invested in their alumni programs, which I think is fantastic. And so they've actually gone and cold called their old professors and, and the heads of their departments and said, hey, we'd love to come do an informational session, um, not necessarily on outreach, but opportunities available in SAS. Um, and so now Megan, I'm actually gonna do one of these later on today. So got Megan on my team, she went to Washington State. She has helped schedule, and I helped to put together the presentation. We weren't totally leaving her out in the dark, but she took the time to schedule a call with uh, the deans of a college that she graduated from. She worked with her old soccer coach to make sure that people are attending. We came up with a plan together, and she's actually gonna lead a whole presentation on just how to prepare for an interview in startups something that she knows a ton about because she just did it successfully and landed a role at a SaaS startup. Um, it was a great opportunity to say, hey, we've got a foothold in, in this university system and now I'm, I'm leaning on my reps uh, and providing some opportunities for them to grow. Um, we don't need to go through all of these, but I think that there's other aspects here like sales operations. There's all kinds of nitty gritty reports that we as managers need to be checking and that quite frankly, there's just not enough time in the day. Um, and so we really leaned on it. Uh, having captains on the floor, perhaps it's a call blitz captain, somebody who's in charge of making sure, hey, here's the best times to call. The data tells us that this time of day on this day of the week, gonna be our best bet for getting connects. Let's all run a stiff. So they'll come up with some kind of prize and give them a budget. Um, they'll get the whole team excited over Slack because we're all working from home now. They can't just walk up and down the floor. Um, and they're actually owning like, hey, do people make their dials? How are we tracking on KPIs? How many connects did we make? Um, and who led with meetings, right? So there's tons of opportunities uh, to leverage folks on the floor and perhaps give yourself some more bandwidth. Next up, um, communication. I, I talked briefly about how we have kind of unintentionally, but I think it's natural for people to just start to silo when you're like, okay, like there's a lot going on. I'm trying to own these things. I got it covered. Um, but it's really important to make sure outside of the tornado of activities that you have coming across your desk every day, how am I making sure uh, that I have constant communication with the leaders on my team, um, teams across the org, there's eight managers with eight different teams, um, marketing and EVM projects, um, with our marketing department, with the individual reps, and then of course departments so cross-functionally. Um, one thing that we have instituted is, um, of course, our management team has a formal meeting every Friday for an hour and a half. It's all eight of us, plus our VP of inside sales and um, our chief operating officer. So we call this one like it's got to be ready for prime time. <laughs> and we've learned that now that the team is growing and there's still so many projects going on, we make time to meet um, every Wednesday before then to really suss out any discussion topics so that if there is something where we want to make a proposal to our exec team or we're finding some trends, it's not the first time that we're discussing it at prime time. Um, you know, it, it helps us to really gather our thoughts and then of course position everybody on the team as like, hey, like we got our stuff together and like we're working cohesively as a team. Plus, there are so many things that I've learned from other managers of what they're doing, uh, in their Slack channels, contests they're running on their team that we just straight up copy paste across the org. Um, and we're finding a lot of success with that. Um, when it comes to um, like 
checking in across the teams. We, of course, have multiple team meetings throughout the week. We have a training with the SDRs. Um, we also have, I mentioned those captains. Typically, there, you probably have somebody, and I should think of a better term for this, but who's like your class president on the team. Like, whether or not they're a top performer is kind of irrelevant. They are like the go-to person who's the guru and like has either been there for a while or is just an outstanding employee, really has people's backs, and everybody goes to them for advice. Um, make sure you're tight and in lockstep with that person and saying like, hey, like, how's the team doing? Uh, we want to run this contest. Could you float it to the rest of the team? Um, because the worst, <laughs> one of the worst things I think about this isolation is like, I don't even get to talk to all of the reps that I normally do throughout the day because it just goes by so quickly. Um, so if I'm working with my uh, team leads, unofficial and official within the different teams, it's a great opportunity for them to give a shout out. So like, hey, you know what? So-and-so who's new did a really great job on a call list today, and then I can um, reach out to them and, and make sure that they're getting acknowledged. Um, and then, of course, across departments, we do have members of our team who own like ABM, account-based marketing and sales plays with our demand gen team. Um, but we're making sure that we have Slack channels, um, email chains as needed, um, and like quick check-ins. Uh, to make sure that when we do take the time to set aside resources to run a campaign um, that is expensive in both time and resources, um, we're walking in lockstep with them. Last but not least, the importance of positive feedback loops. I cannot say enough about how important this is, especially in an entry-level role uh, with folks who are early in their development in their career. Um, so we make sure that we are calling out successes in a multitude of different ways. Um, you know, people learn differently. They like to be called out in different ways. Some people are uncomfortable with public adoration. So check in with your team and, and make sure there's plenty of opportunities um, to, to meet folks where they are. Uh, the first one I would say is big ticket items. Uh, whatever, you know, if you have a quota attainment metric for us, it's sales accepted leads or sales. We have an automated ambition and Slack integration that triggers an alert. If you're not familiar with Ambition, um, it's like a gamification coaching platform that syncs up to our Salesforce. Um, and what it'll do is it'll pull anytime in real time somebody gets something towards their quota or, um, you know, like really moment momentous, like a, a hat trick, three meetings in a day or a grand slam to book four meetings in a day, which is nuts. <laughs> or they close a really big deal. Um, we have a trigger set up that actually tags that person in Slack and alerts an entire channel that somebody got one towards their quota. Why is this important? Managers are running around all the time and it sucks when you're a rep and you're like, I just worked so hard to get something and it's like been three hours before I got any kind of pat on the back. We all love to be acknowledged for our hard work and automated way to do this. People can hype each other up. Um, and even those who don't like quote showboating or like feel uncomfortable of, they would never shout themselves out in the channel. It's nice to have this just um, automated logic <laughs> that sets that up for them. Outside of the Slack, when we were in the office, it would actually play a 20 second walk up song, um, something from YouTube, whatever their favorite song is, or like music video type or scene from a movie. It would play it on the TV and that was kind of like their calling card. Um, we also make sure that we're running plenty of spiffs um, and celebrating at the end of every single month who's hitting quota, as well as in real time, the managers, um, we make it a priority. If we know that someone's quota sale is happening or their meeting is running that day, as soon as it flips, we're doing an at here in our Slack channel. If you can't tell we love Slack, <laughs> we use it a lot. Um, to alert everybody and really hype up whatever that rep uh, had been working towards that month. Second would be things like leading indicators. Um, so, of course, the big ticket items, those are lagging on the front end. Um, what kind of reporting updates can I check in via outreach? I mentioned those call blitz captains. They can certainly call out, hey, someone so made X amount of dials. They're leading the team. At the end of the day, it takes me two seconds to check in outreach or whatever your CRM is. Who is leading the team in effort? Because not all of their, um, you know, not all your victories are recorded in a, the big scoreboard. Right? There's a lot of little victories along the way. So maybe somebody had a lot of connections, didn't book a meeting, but had a great referral. Be sure to call those out um, in huddle or in team trainings. Third, I think would be uh, culture. We talked about how important it is to make sure that people are having fun at work, especially in a job like SCR where it is a grind. Um, so we're making sure that we're running um, all kinds of contests throughout the week. We also do this thing called MVP of the week. 
it's a soft skill highlight. So we have three offices now, Seattle, Tampa, London. We give out four awards. One is for objective, who booked the most meetings this week because we want to make sure our top performers are feeling the love as well. Um, and the other three, um, members from each team or office can vote on for somebody that they believe fulfilled our core values the most that week. So an example might be like, hey, I'd like to vote for Bailey. She really showed grit. She made 101 dials and booked the meeting on the 101st call, like way to go. Um, or so-and-so really had my back. Uh, they, I was having a tough day and they took the time to like hop on the Zoom with me and just let me vent um, and then get back on the phones and make dials with me. So reps can submit votes throughout the week. Um, and then at the end on Friday, we have a gentleman who has volunteered as the captain of this initiative. And he actually goes through and reads all the nice things that people said about his teammates, which I think is really powerful to end the week. With like, hey, like, let's end on a positive note and acknowledge, again, not all your wins might be notated on the scoreboard. Um, so he'll read all those. Whoever got the most amount of votes also gets a gift card. Um, and then they get shouted out in our training the next week. But we love that one. and It's been really popular amongst our team. When we were in the office, we used to do a trophy for it, too, that we passed around. But in the meantime, gift cards work well, <laughs> too. And then, of course, last but not least, improvement. Um, making sure that reps really feel the love of, like, this job is hard. It's easy to get bogged down and go, like, man, I didn't book any meetings today. I didn't have any wins. But the reality is, is you're, like, there are so many small uh, leading indicators of things where it's like, hey, you know what? Your call conversion is up 2% since last month. That's incremental improvement that if you keep this up, you're going to be a machine, you know, as you continue to dedicate yourself to your craft. Um, were they on a streak? Did they book a number of meetings in a row together? Um, and then this is my favorite one. I call these second degree compliments. Anytime I, I see one of these, um, I try and make a note to let, especially if it's for somebody outside of my team, let their hiring manager know and say, hey, I noticed that Kyle's call conversion rate is awesome. Um, and I'll send a screenshot and then that manager can say, Hey, you're getting shout outs. Like your hard work is getting noticed. And I'm learning that I've learned this from our, um, executive team who does a phenomenal job of anytime we're in that Friday primetime meeting, she'll make a list of everybody who we're shouting out. We talk about all of our reps every week, uh, their progress, their development, their quota attainment. And anytime there's a shout out, she'll make a note and then she actually sends those reps a note. And can you imagine how impactful that would have been as an entry level rep to get something a real, like a note from your chief operating officer that says, hey, like I really appreciate your hard work. It's not going unnoticed. Like that is awesome, especially at the end of the week. Um, so the more that we can do that, I think the more that we can kind of foster this community of like positivity while we are all isolated <laughs> um, and keep the psych high because who knows how long we're gonna be in this COVID situation. Um, and with that, I think we're just about coming up at time at around 20 minutes. So I'm gonna pause my monologue here and open it up for any questions. Now it looks like Vivian's got one for me from Sean. So how has your team um, and individual meeting cadence changed at all since going remote? Sean, I'm assuming that you're asking like how many are we booking? That's a really good question. Um, we've noticed that in general, the volume has been about the same in terms of meetings booked, but where we're hurting is in show rates. Um, people have a lot going on. Um, it's been for different reasons. I think in March, everybody was just like, I like, sure, maybe I'll, I'll talk to you at the end of the week, but then something else has come up and I just don't have the bandwidth. Um, April, May, it was certainly transitioning to like, okay, this is interesting, but I'm going to have to bail now because my budget just got cut or worse like we're having to lay off people and like i can't handle talking about this right now while we're here in june i think leaders have accepted look we're in this for the long haul so working remote is it's it's so two months ago <laughs> like we're all acknowledging that this is the new normal um and i don't really have the bandwidth to take a look at tools so in order to combat this what we've been doing is just been providing some high value offers um around things like hey i understand you don't have time to look at a platform but why don't we chat about, um, I can introduce you to my executive team and, and they might be able to share what they're hearing in the industry. So meetings booked kind of staying about the same. Our show rate had dipped um, like 10% down. Uh, we're starting to get it back up by doing these longer play nurturing offerings and less of the, um, the I would call super traditional SDR. Like I want to book a meeting and then a demo for my account executive. 
Oh, sorry. I realized after I dragged on, <laughs> you're asking. Um, actually, it's about your internal team meetings and one-on-ones. Um, we do meet a lot. <laughs> um, I find that my days are pretty back-to-back on Zoom calls. I'm sure everybody on this phone call is starting to suffer from uh, video call exhaustion. We do meet a lot more. Uh, like, for example, we huddle every single day, sometimes twice, as my team of 13 reps. Um, I'm meeting with my reps one-on-one. That's pretty standard once a week. Uh, but we have built in some just like general check-ins, especially with my new people, external hires who are brand new to the role. Uh, we meet every single day. Um, and then I'll just do like every other week with my more senior reps, um, a general sequence and strategy check-in. Um, because normally I won't just stop at their desk and be like, hey, Sean, like what you working on? <laughs> Can't do that. So I have to make sure that we build time in. But again, that whirlwind of daily activities doesn't take away from coaching, which one could argue is the most important part of our job. Anything else? (laughs) All right. Um, well, if anything else does come up, or if you just want to chat about your team, um, talk shop around SDR land, I love to do that. My contact info is right there. It's first.last at outreach.io is my email. And then I think I'm the only Brooke Pachessa on LinkedIn, the benefits of having a unique last name. Um, but feel free to holler. I would love to connect with you all. And thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. <laughs>